But when it comes to living the good life, a life that includes the things that matter most to you, my next guests believe it should be a lot simpler than we make it. In fact, they say they've figured out the roadmap to succeeding at really living well, and they can help guide all of us. So since 2014, these three Yale professors have led hundreds of students in finding their most meaningful paths and answers in one of the most popular courses at the school. It's called Life Worth Living. And now you don't have to go to Yale, and I wouldn't get in anyway, <laughs> to get the lessons because it's all in a new book that Reader's Digest names as one of the 26 best inspirational books sure to change your life. Please welcome Yale professors and authors Ryan mcanelli Lenz, Miroslav Volf, and Matthew Krosman. Thank you so much. All right, so the article said these are books that will change, this book will change your life, but Ryan, the introduction of the book says this book might wreck your life. Help me understand here. <laughs> well, we live these lives that are they're kind of set up to do what they do. Yeah. We've got a way of living and we're kind of chugging along. But when you stop and think, you never know what's going to happen. Right. That everyday order of things might get turned over and it might look like wreckage yeah. from the perspective of the life you were living. Yeah. But from the perspective of the life that you find, it will look like new future, new hope, a better path forward. Okay, I have, my heart started racing as you explained it. I've read the book. For background, Miroslav, you all teach faith, culture, and theology classes. Uh, I remember taking a class at Temple University called Death and Dying, mm. and my friends thought I was crazy. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do a crime show, but I was looking, I was searching. I was the person who was uh, always in the self-help aisle back when people went to bookstores a lot, mm. and I was always searching. And this book reminds me of that sensation I think we all have, which is what's the purpose? What's the point? Yeah. What matters? We find ourselves running through life, going through life, searching after one thing after another, often in a kind of uh, rat race, mm. uh, often trying to reach this elusive goal and never quite getting there. And I find it's really helpful sometimes to halt, to stop, and ask, what does truly matter what does truly to matter? us? Um, Ryan, the other question outside of what matters to me is, like, what am I doing with my life? Mm. That's a gut punch. I mean, I'm doing this <laughs> show and I love it. Yeah, yeah. But mm. then you have to go into deep crevices of your heart in that room. My closet is my room. My mom taught me to go in the closet and pray. That's my silent room. Uh, wonderful. Um, going into my closet and saying, what am I doing with my life? And I, and I answer that question by, I hope through this show, I'm bringing people together to show that we can talk about anything and truly the diversity of our audience that we have more in common than we have different, when the world makes us feel like we have nothing in common. Okay. That's how I answer it today. How should we expect to answer that question? Should we be clear-sighted? Should we have a North Star, which you reference in that answer? Well, I, I love that you just talked about conversation, because I think that's some of what's so important. As you said, there's so much that divides us. And, and we got to be honest, I, I feel like some of us will give different answers to yeah. these questions. And, and those answers can divide us, maybe in certain ways, at certain points, we may have disagreements that should divide us. But what's exciting to us about the conversations that we've been convening for the last 10 years at Yale has been, these are conversations that are oriented around shared questions yeah. rather than shared answers. Shared questions rather than shared answers. In the book, you write about the four layers of existing, and you call them autopilot, effectiveness, self-awareness, and self-transcendence. Um, you say on the surface level is autopilot. In the book, you write, when we're living only in this layer, we're not even aware of why we do what we do. We simply do what we do because that's what we do. Yeah. It and so the, you so heard like, hey, yeah, we're hearing, <laughs> We relate to that. I mean, and that, I should say for us, that's, that's the starting point, yeah. right? That, that's just, that's where we live. And when we're theologians and philosophers by training, we love doing reflection. And that's part of what we're trying to do with this book is invite us all to take a step back and reflect. But at the end of the day, we can only live our lives so intentionally. You can only spend so much time in reflection. And so actually, we, we imagine this, this, it eventually, that's where you start as a sort of unreflective yeah. version of that. You just do what you do because that's what you do. But at some level, where we want to get to the point is where we do what we do because that's what we do. 
but there's a deeper meaning behind it. We do what we do. Those are our habits. Right. Our habits have been formed by something, by something deeper. By something deeper. Oh, I could talk to you all day, and we're going to keep going. Coming up, the conversation continues. How do you start to answer the question? The Professor's Guide for Finding the Answer and Living by It next. Oh. We're back with Yale professors Ryan McAnally Lins, Miroslav Volf, and Matthew Krosman, who are helping people build a flourishing life with their book, life worth living. That's a big responsibility I just said. You can help us fix our lives. <laughs> I mean. You're never gonna become an expert. None of us are gonna become experts. So we will never master life? No, no. But what we have to do, and actually a lot of I'm life. I'm crying now. <laughs> All this work trying to get it right, we're never gonna master it. But so much of life, so many, so many of life's big choices. I think about, you know, my wife and I deciding to get married, right? Like, what are you, who are you to decide to make a decision that's gonna last for the rest of your life, right? We're constantly, the most important things in our life are moments where we are choosing as amateurs. Choosing, and that brings me to what you describe as the, this, this recipe, if you will, for a good life. Um, you say agency, how should we live? Um, circumstance, what should we hope for and affect? How does a good life feel? So I'll ask you, how does a good life feel for you? I aspire for something like joy. Joy. And joy is a little bit different than, say, simple pleasure. Mm. I In can what way? Help me understand. Well, so so uh, I could take a pleasure pill, mm. right? I could drink something, I yeah. could smoke something, and I could <laughs> feel... <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, it's not that kind of show. <laughs> but some, something better than that, yeah. right, is not to have to take that pill, ah. but have reasons in what is before you mm -hmm. to rejoice over something. Rejoice. You, have a, you have something beautiful happen to me. My, my daughter get, is born, mm -hmm. and suddenly my whole world lights up because yeah. I see something beautiful and I think that's the kind of joy that we want. We want the joy that is rooted. Yeah. Ryan, in that, in that recipe or food groups for a good life, it's what should we hope for? You know, I was, I'm gonna tell the truth, I was upstairs and they popped up the lottery and I was like, oof, I can hope for that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We sometimes get mixed up on the things we should hope for. I think we all hope for, you know, health and safety of our loved ones and our family and friends, but what else should we hope for? Yeah. So one of the things I think I've learned in this process is that our best hopes aren't just for us. Uh, what we should be hoping for isn't even just for our loved ones, but uh, for a whole world. Yeah. Uh, hoping for a kind of transformation. Yeah. Yeah. In this book, I have gifted to everyone that I love and care about because I do believe it is something that is illuminating and it is a conversation starter. Life Worth Living, a guide to what matters most is available now. I said I gifted it to everyone I know. I know y'all. You're all getting a copy of this brilliant book, a thoughtful book, a reflection on life. Thank you so much, Ryan, Miroslav, Matthew, all of our guests today. We will see you next time. Please go get this book.